friends if you are joining for the first time please subscribe to the channel today we are discussing a very important topic the topic is why taliban cabinet formation has become so difficult why is does it appear that pakistan will have to fire fight with pashtun nationalism because taliban is entirely made up of pashtuns now as it is going forward tajik uzbek are not getting sufficient representation and the second big problem is ttp which is a pashtun version of taliban inside pakistan has started carrying out attacks on pakistan army and installations and that nationalistic movement because they do not recognize the artificial drawn boundary they believe that their nationalism is a greater afghanistan a pashtun land or whatever name you want to call it with to discuss all this the taliban take over of afghanistan the situation of cabinet formation the role of pakistan in afghanistan is afghanistan a client state a colony of pakistan and the dangers inherent to pakistan itself with what has happened we have a guest with us whom you have seen frequently on our channel earlier major general is with us and uh, i would request major general squash to please tell us initially what is happening in afghanistan with the taliban take over and what is the dynamic playing out in afghanistan itself yeah it's current uh, now uh, as america is finally gone and taliban has come in uh, afghanistan except uh, panche because that has was not fallen to make it fall it was not easy for taliban two things stand out ki if afghan forces would have been fought uh, anywhere else also they would could have given a bloody fight to taliban taliban is not a very a uh, fighting machine however uh, they did not fight because uh, american failed them the poor leadership at political level and military level they were well trained well motivated otherwise they were equipped with 60 billion dollar weapon but unfortunately after uh, uh, you know this uh, bagram airport was given their logistic supply system collapsed and air support which they were getting from americans also was not there so these were the two main reason as to why the uh, afghan forces could not fight and at the same time the top uh, pakistani uh, officers inducted inside afghanistan and they could corrupt these uh, top uh, afghani or uh, taliban uh, afghani officer and due to which taliban could run over complete afghanistan within 11 days without fighting or by the afghan forces which was unfortunate they could have fought they were well equipped well they had a weapon and they were doing heavy lifting in last 2 3 years they were fighting it is not the americans which were fighting against taliban taliban americans were only giving them air support however hmm. when they have to actually fight in panjshir then the true color of taliban came and they could not basically make any headway as it is Uh, if you see panjshir is, is a bowl uh, you know covered by mountains all around it is very difficult to attack panjshir it is dif- easy to defend only artery which is going inside panjshir is a river called panjshir and the road that was very co- well covered by by the northern alliance uh, ahmed mashur uh, army and also uh, you know the uh, earlier vice president uh, he was also located there only so the result was they were giving such a tough fight to uh, taliban the uh, taliban realized they were not able to crack they took a help of pakistan general bajwa sent major general adil rahmani the ssg goc mean a special group like our taya special forces along with the initially with three two ssg battalion then the third one was also sent one rt battery squadron of armor and uh, number of drones and active air force and after that only they could make some dent not in the complete panjshir the mouth of panjshir has been now occupied by taliban at a very heavy cost by the uh, ssg of pakistan there are 10 officers of pakistan army 12 jcos and more than 150 other ranks have been killed in this 
this uh, fight which has taken place in Panjshir. And till now also, Panjshir, uh, two-third of Panjshir is still with uh, Nathan Arai, especially the heights, which can always dominate the valley. So the result is yeah. uh, that to take Panjshir, they took a Pakistan help. And Pakistan and Taliban are now handing gloves. That's why the threat to Jammu and Kashmir increased because somewhere tacit understanding, we will help you here, you help us there. Now, as far as... Uh, no, but if I may, uh, may I ask you a question, Panjashir? Because Taliban brought all those images out, uh, hoisting their flag and saying that we have captured Panjashir. And then the news came, as you have uh, uh, told us also, that they have just, they are just on the lowland, the heights, the mountains, which is what matters, is with the resistance to Taliban. Actually, personally, I don't think so. They are any going to be any much better for India. Their mindset is the same or similar. But anyways, between the two evils, India has to choose the lesser one. So the heights are still with them. And uh, Taliban has not captured Panjshir as they are trying to portray to the world. Because please tell us how does it work, uh, the heights versus the lowlands for an army to say that we are in control of the valley or we have captured it. What in your experience, sir, is the true position when a stalemate of this sort happens? Secondly, Pakistan has it been exposed now completely in the world that it is sending its troops in a way officially to fight in Panjshir to help Taliban. So, what is the dynamic that you are seeing there, sir? Absolutely. See, as far as Iskandar, there is no doubt. Panjshir, you can only say the mouth of Panjshir. The to some extent, the valley floor, say about five to ten kilometers, is with the Taliban, where they could host uh, their flag. The complete higher mountains are with the Northern Alliance. They can always dominate the valley by bringing fire. You remember in Kargil War, till we have not taken back those heights from the Pakistani raiders, we could not use that road going from uh, from uh, uh, Srinagar coming to Daras to Kargil. The reason was that whosoever occupy heights, occupy, uh, dominate the area. So as on today, Panshi is still with, with another alliance to some extent. At the same time, the Pakistan army total environment is exposed. Now there are Twitter handle, there are been messages which is going around. Everyone knows that the SSG uh, of Pakistan was utilized and Major General Adil Rahmani is the one which has as the GOC of SSG has participated, Iran has openly came and told that we want to investigate a foreign hand in, in fighting uh, along with Taliban in Panchi. So they know it very well. It is the Pakistan army which have played. So they are also now become cautious. Uh, Russia has also changed its stance now. Earlier, Russia was coming very close to Taliban. It has taken a pause. It has realized it. The Taliban, the way the Taliban government has been formed, Taliban cannot be relied upon. So they are very cautious. The world knows it that it is the Pakistan army, Pakistan SSG, which was involved in Panjshir, and that only could make up a, a small dent. Otherwise, if they would have been only Taliban, I don't think they, they could have a courage to take the complete valley also, and this would have been a stalemate. So this shows that they were not that powerful as they have been made to show. If Afghan forces would have fought, they could have stayed there for years together. They were well equipped. They, they were trained. But the reason is, the, you know, uh, everything went wrong. Americans uh, have failed completely there. Americans did not rely that. No doubt Americans were to go. But the withdrawal was poorly planned and professionally executed in a most unprofessional manner. Sir, the question which now arises is, as I remember in one of our previous talks, you had told us how uh, Uzbeks, Tajiks are almost 50% of the population of Afghanistan. Pashtuns are also 50%, roughly, roughly. With Afghanistani army not fighting, that time it was a presumption that Taliban said we would be an inclusive government in the sense that we will share power with all other uh, uh, ethnicities, I may, if I may say. But now that they have come to power, it appears that the cabinet is going to be a Pashtun cabinet. Tajis, Uzbeks and others will not get any 
significant representation maybe no representation is also being said so how do you see uh, that going forward where 50% of the population who are also armed who are also violent men who are also used to fighting civil wars for last 30 40 years how do you see taliban going forward uh, in that i will ask do you think pakistan will now send its boots on the ground to maintain control over afghanistan because there are reports coming that their ministers are saying we need to send 1 lakh people to govern afghanistan 1 lakh people so uh, how do you see that happening sir the cabinet and pakistan civil administration now yeah a second you know the pakistan had two aim in the mind uh, that uh, they wanted taliban to take over uh, afghanistan and uh, india should not have any role because if if uh, taliban comes in afghanistan they felt that they will get a strategic tap to that extent they feel that they have already managed to achieve it and now they don't want uh, india to have any uh, you know hold there in afghanistan now as far as afghanistan is concerned 33 ministers have been announced and out of that 17 ministers are from hakani net now first before that only i want to tell before the ministry was announced the pakistan government sent the dg isi he was sent there uh, lieutenant general fiaz hamid he has which orchestrated this complete uh, you know cabinet out of the 33 17 are basically hatani network 70% are those which are proscribed terrorists either by un and or by the us and they uh, almost uh, 30% has got uh, uh, prize money on their head going from 5 million to 15 million now this is the track record of of, of uh, the cabinet which have been formed now if you remember uh, the composition of various uh, ethnic group in Pak- in uh, afghanistan 42% are pashtun 27% are tajik 9% are uzbek and 8% are hazara now hazaras are the one which are the shia which are akin to iran now as far as the cabinet is concerned no representation is been given to hazara two are from uzbek and one is from tajik the one which is taken from uzbek and uh, tajik are also which are been already compromised with pashtun because they were earlier also in the government so the point is today this government has got three uh, you know things which stand out one is that it is not a government to run a government it is a government which is a, a culmination of the terrorist second is mm-hmm. it has been totally dominated by hakani network which is pro pakistan pro isi third thing is that there is no ethnic representation other than pashtun fourth is that there is no woman which has been taken into the cabinet with uh, you know <laughs> taliban say that the women are not supposed to gone they are supposed to stay at mm-hmm. home Uh, look after the children and uh, you know that that is the mindset now the point yeah. is that without any administration acumen and without any tangible uh, you know administration skill they will not able to function and remember there was a chance that they may take some members from earlier afghan government whether it was abdullah abdullah or hamid karzai who was ex president so that you know they have got some experience of running the government but they haven't taken no the government which has been formed is a government of terrorists and this has energized the whole area today in south asia all terrorist group are feeling empowered and you will find terrorism increasing now and you will find instability also coming not only in afghanistan also in south asia and it is a imprint of a pakistan when you will will discuss further then i'll tell you that it will also have a adverse impact on pakistan itself which pakistan is not realizing now is it correct sir uh, obviously as you said that all terrorists will be empowered because uh, i was reading till yesterday a man with 5 million dollar reward on his head for information leading to his capture FBI most wanted list. He is the Interior Minister. He is the Home Minister of Afghanistan. Sirajuddin Hakani. Absolutely yeah, correct. Very Akani, correct. Well, well said. So, so somebody with 35 in Indian term 35 crore rupees award on his head becomes the Interior Minister. That means uh, everybody else is empowered. That we can be at least if we have one million dollar award, we can at least be a district magistrate somewhere. So that is going to happen now. And 
entire region will suffer including india and including uh, pakistan but sir on pakistan uh, uh, if you could just tell our audiences the darand line and why the pashtun has no regard for darand line and why this tdp and uh, problem could arise in pakistan itself with what has happened absolutely it's current first of all pakistan is thinking that they have achieved a greatest victory by ensuring taliban has come in power in afghanistan but i suppose this will be their biggest mistake now whatever happen is that first of all tareek e taliban pakistan which is also very close to uh, afghan taliban is now become emboldened and they are doing terrorist activity almost three to four more time what they were doing earlier and this is a, a you can say a danger alarm for pakistan they want a sharia law to come is pakistan prepared for a sharia law the way afghanistan is having second thing what will happen is our pak border the pashtun which are there they don't recognize the durand line the militancy and terrorism has also started there they want to go and join with afghanistan so the whole area of our pak khyber pakhtun ke area will again get activated third thing is the area which is there in baluchistan dominated by baluchistan liberation army it will now get energized and they will now become emboldened and will strike against the pakistani and chinese and they will like to have a freedom which will create a big problem for pakistan and their china pakistan economic corridor is unlikely to be completed fourth thing is that uh, you know the instability which is coming in uh, afghanistan now people are ready to run away from there and this durand line uh, when pakistan was trying to put fence is been totally resented by afghanistan taliban and you, you they will not let it put it you will find 15 to 20 lakhs the afghani refugees are likely to come in pakistan they are going to go to other countries also like turkey iran uh, tajikistan and uzbekistan but pakistan does not have financial capacity to take care they are already in a debt of 126 billion dollar their uh, you know investment is zero their export is almost uh, 2% left than what it was earlier their foreign reserve is only 7 billion dollar cannot look after even one month of their import in this condition when the inflation rate is so high and no one is ready to give them a loan how will they sustain the 15 to 20 lakhs extra uh, refugee which is coming so the point is today what pakistan is thinking that he has achieved a, a big uh, you know uh, monument by ensuring that the afghanistan uh, has got a taliban government they, they not realizing taliban will create more problem for pakistan in time to come another issue which come is current that uh, you know the americans have made a biggest mistake no doubt american towards supposed to withdraw but there was a better way of withdrawing they have to plan and execute their withdrawal in a most professional manner which was not done this weapon which are left 60 to 80 billion dollar are going to bring further instability now taliban cannot use these weapon they are using more like a monument and neither they have trained manpower <laughs> what will happen is that the pakistan may get it majority of it or part of it and this will increase their conventional power they are the latest weapon which are only available with nato you remember uh, that very late just two three months back the black hawk 27 helicopter which are the mm-hmm. most modern helicopter were also given by uh, america mm-hmm. to afghanistan now they have also fallen into their hand and so is the most modern air force 17 most modern air force of the world with 200 aircraft 177 aircraft were operationalized though while going america is try to deactivate them but i suppose that can be taken care of that so the mm-hmm. pakistan may get the chunk of it and this is a, 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 a you can say a danger a bell for india another thing which can happen in this is some weapons can fall into the hands of chinese also chinese are very good in uh, reverse engineering so they can find the counter to that or they can find a duplicate of that that danger is also there overall the area will become much more active another very big threat which india is looming large is this 8 to 10 thousand laskar e toba jaise mohammed terrorists mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. have gone mm-hmm. from uh, pok and they were fighting mm-hmm. along with the taliban against afghan forces mm-hmm. have now mm-hmm. become free 
they have already come in POK. They have been given a heroic welcome. And they are equipped with M4 and M16, latest weapon from America. And there is a chance of they try to infiltrate inside India. Though our counter-infiltration grid is quite strong and robust and stable, we know they can come, but the threat is there. And so is this uh, Islamic State Khorasan. Because this will get uh, now energized and activated. We have about uh, 25 uh, you know, uh, youth which have gone from Kerala. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of sleeper cell and OGW working. So this is again a threat that Islamic State Khorasan can also become active in southern part of the country. So overall, you will find the area will be activated and we have to be prepared for this eventuality. And we have to be very, very careful and we have to make sure that we are prepared to take action against this. Ishakra. So the two, three points you have raised and I will come to that. One is, as you point out, that Afghanistan has a very modern weapon, 17th largest air force, which is not of any use to Afghanistan. Because I saw Jula uh, Bnaake, Jule Jule, they were aircraft. We all saw those videos coming out. They have made a, uh, what is it called, a swing, uh, which we used to have in our childhood. And they are just swinging with the planes. These planes will likely go to Pakistan, giving Pakistan a very strong boost of conventional warfare. Uh, also, sir, as you have said that uh, they would use these uh, because Talib Pakistan is mediating in their cabinet. Pakistan is helping them uh, fight in Panjshir Valley. So Taliban is dependent on Pakistan now to wage any war or to stay in power to defeat the Tajik, Uzbek, Northern Alliance. They would need Pakistan now to do the Pakistan is a professional army. With it. So they would need a professional army now to defend whatever they have conquered. So, sir, uh, in that context, and the south of India also, there are certain elements going to join ISIS and Taliban. So what should India's strategy be in this situation that we reduce the potential of damage to us? See, it's, uh, it's, it's a mute question. First of all, what is going to happen is that the majority of the terrorist group headquarters possibly will shift from Pakistan toward Afghanistan. Because Pakistan uh, wants to come out of the grey list of financial action task force. It wants to show that Laskare, Toba, Jaisi, Mohammed uh, do not exist. Their headquarters are no more with us. So the chances of these shifting toward Afghanistan and Al-Qaeda, Islamic State, Khorasan also becoming active in Afghanistan, chances are very high. So therefore, the whole area will be quite volatile. Now, as far as India is concerned, we know that uh, the, uh, these Laskare Toba Jaisi Muhammad terrorists will try to infiltrate. They are now equipped with more modern weapon. So we have to be careful on that issue. Second thing is that we have to take care of this Islamic State Khorasan. Third thing is with our friends, we have to expose Pakistan. Ki the Pakistan has been playing a double game. Pakistan has been playing double game for so long with America. With pa I suppose America relied. Now, America will be slightly less dependent on uh, uh, Pakistan. It has lost that um, uh, strategic importance to that extent, to that extent of a frontline state. So, possibly there will be a pressure. What uh, we need to do is we should guard our own borders, be prepared for any infiltration coming, make our uh, counter inf infiltration grid strong, and also our security grid strong in the rest of the India, expose Pakistan. Show to the world that Pakistan is a hub center of terrorism, must be blacklisted by financial action task force. And second thing is hope against hope that there is a, a, a fight which will take place after some time between Pakistan and Taliban. Because Taliban is not going to uh, become so subservient to uh, Pakistan for a long run. You will find it that uh, Durand line will become a problem for them. You will find that uh, the refugee coming from Afghanistan to Pakistan will be a problem. And tariq -e taliban pakistan activity will also become a, a, a reason for having a, a sort of confrontation between both. So the, today a multi-pronged strategy along with our friend like America uh, to some extent try to convince even to Iran and also to Russia show the two color of uh, uh, Pakistan, try to get them blacklisted and also try to put pressure on international community that Pakistan should be declared as a terrorist state. And at the same time, prepare for worst case scenario for uh, within our own country. 
sir that is that thing that you said i want to ask you uh, a question on that uh, like you said terrorists will get encouraged after what has happened in afghanistan that they can come to power a terrorist believes he can be a home minister absolutely or a prime yeah, well said but is in the same way pashtuns now after capturing power in pa- afghanistan may believe that they are long suffering from the punjabis of pakistan and it is their time now to strike their independence this side of the durand line from balochistan where also pashtuns are in a very significant number around the balochi people to the entire range to the khyber pakhtun and uh, join it with afghanistan and uh, that could lead to an absolute civil war if the and pashtuns are present in karachi also the well off ones are present across uh, pakistan now uh, dominated at one side so do you think that that challenge of pashtun nationalism is a very serious challenge one and second sir uh, should india india has been very passive in afghanistan we uh, for better or worse we did not want to be part of the world peace keeping force we didn't want to put boots on ground pakistan has no qualms they are sending their army in they are sending their fighters in do you think we are being too passive uh, we are being too not even uh, i would think we were being too much of a gandhian here and not doing anything and do you think there is some scope that we can stoke the fire of pashtun nationalism or do something there uh, that was what i would i want to ask you what are your thoughts on that uh, absolutely is current uh, you know uh, uh, the diplomacy has to be mature no doubt about it india is a very stable country india has got its standing in the world so india cannot do any activity which put us on a, a bad light now as far as uh, uh, baluchistan is concerned and also what is happening in khyber pakhtunkhwa to some extent uh, uh, you know uh, there is no doubt we are giving them emotional and social support we may not be giving them a military support but what is you telling this ki in future you will find a volatile situation not only baluchistan but in khyber pakhtunkhwa and also in apak border where in all these pashtuns you know they will like to have independence from pakistan this is bound to happen and this will be a cause of rift between afghanistan and pakistan you will find it the relation will uh, uh, deteriorate because there are many differences between both of them point today is that the fact uh, the uh, pashtuns in afghanistan do not recognize durand line it is a cause of concern tehreek e taliban pakistan will create a problem uh, in pakistan and afghanistan is unlikely to take action and these tariqe taliban pakistan will have all bases in afghanistan now this two things itself will create a problem and then instability agitate there in pakistan we don't have to do too much to that we don't want to be seen to be harboring and helping any terrorist group because that is not our policy uh, we have our own interest we have to be very tactful in handling you remember we can't forget that we have invested 3 billion dollar in afghanistan and now we say ki uh, is a gone you know there are certain um, uh, commentators which are telling sir it is only eight how can you have only eight there are four uh, 44 projects which are still going on there are 630 engineer technician and manager struck in uh, in afghanistan because our projects were going on and our investment in chabar is 1.8 billion dollar because we wanted that we should have a connectivity to afghanistan and central asian state and north south transport corridor bypassing pakistan our trade is going through that if you do not have any uh, link with with the government of afghanistan whichever it is your whole money is sunk because china is already putting pressure on iran they want that the, uh, the chabar port they can dwell far better than mm. india and they want gwadar to be connected with chabar no all these things are more important to us we have to understand that our diplomacy is working our quiet diplomacy has got its weight you know everyone is saying that we are not uh, happening uh, you know helping another alliance you know you you should do certain things which are required to be go- correct for your national interest we possibly are doing a very active diplomacy which is not seen visibly but we uh, whether it is our foreign minister or whether our ambassadors are going around making sure things happen the way we want but remember that our interest are huge in afghanistan we have to show a diplomacy and make sure we are relevant we can't be irrelevant and to me it looks like that majority of the countries are now recognizing our view point 
country like Iran, country like uh, Russia, they are now coming much closer to Indian viewpoint and realizing it. What India want is becoming a fact. So therefore, to us, it looks like that we have to be very careful, watchful. We, you know, it is very easy to comment on a TV channel or our, uh, uh, you know, uh, commentary like this when we are uh, discussing on a program. So it looks very mm. nice and people clap that we should be uh, very proactive. There has to be a national interest. We have to be, diplomacy has to be matured. Today, our national interests are involved. So we have to take action as per that. Uh, so I am sure we will make sure that the world comes to know the true color of Pakistan. We maintain a, a relationship with government of Afghanistan, whichever come, ensure that our interests are taken care of. At no point of time, we are not uh, going to recognize government of Afghanistan because that will take a time. It is not only India, majority of the countries. It is not more than two, three, four countries which will initially recognize Afghanistan. Other will wait and watch. I suppose our diplomacy is quite matured and we are going in a very correct uh, direction. And in time to come, uh, we will able to stand by. It is only Pakistan which will suffer. But no doubt, by uh, Taliban coming in Afghanistan, it has shown that the terrorism can also occupy a space. And therefore, terrorists will get emboldened. Terrorism will get energized in the whole area. And this will be a cause of instability, not only in Afghanistan, but in complete South Asia. Is correct. So absolutely, uh, as you have said, terrorism will rise in uh, the entire region. The instability will rise and we will keep requesting you to come back again and again and discuss as the events uh, happen. And thank you so much, sir, for your time. Thank you so much. Thank Jain. you. Thank you, Iskran. Thank you very much. And Jain. Yes. Yeah.